that Joel, you can see my screen right now. Yes, I can. Great. And Ed, I'd like to confirm that you're recording. Yes, ma'am. I push record. Thank you. Okay. We want to invite everybody or welcome everybody for joining us this morning. Um, I am going to be controlling the presentation and with me is Ed Cunningham. Good morning. And I'm Catherine and we're going to be showing you specifically, um, I'll show you the, the agenda in just a minute, but um, we're focusing on frameworks today in Strive and Joel Atkins is also on the call with us assisting with questions and answers. Um, Ed, I'm going to toss to you to talk about questions and answers. Thank you, Catherine. All right, so uh, if you joined us on Tuesday, then you've probably already heard this. We're going to do a similar deal. Because we're doing a 30-minute webinar, we're going to limit our question answering to just this topic, which is about frameworks. Now, please feel free to enter into the chat window any question that you have, um, and um, we can try and get back in touch with people after the webinar. Or, of course, you can always uh, contact us um, the next slide we have information. You can contact us at training at eduphoria.net. You can contact support at eduphoria.net. You can also follow us on social media for any announcement uh, that we have about Strive, about extra releases for Strive and so forth. But for the, this webinar, we're just going to be answering questions about frameworks specifically. And we may not get to all the questions. Last time we ran a little over time. And so um, we may not be able to answer all the questions. Uh, but please feel free to put them in the chat. Okay, thanks, Ed. And this is our overview today. Um, we're going to go through the frameworks. I'm going to show you a few slides just to summarize everything. Then we're going to jump into online help. I'm going to show you a new article that has just been published today about creating frameworks in Strive. I'm going to go through the process of creating and managing a framework and how to tag your courses with subcomponents or what we're calling uh, dimensions and then toss to Ed for tagging evaluation document questions with um, different dimensions that you've added to your frameworks. So that's just an overview of our webinar agenda today and to keep things tight and moving quickly. Let's move on and what are frameworks in Strive? Basically, it's the underlying structure so that you can um, tag components and subcomponents of professional standards across multiple applications in our suite and those applications that are impacted by these uh, framework structures include currently appraise and workshop and with strive you'll see an slo component coming in very soon um, that ties to aware we're not covering that today but just wanted to throw that out there uh, because we started with our framework structure with the transition to t-tests and t-pests and using appraise last year we've used the terminology domain and dimension in our user interface but we those are the terms we're using currently but please note that this is a broader picture where you can include frameworks and professional standards across multiple appraisal types so you could include a framework for your your technology coaches. You could include a framework for counselors, a framework for librarians, one for nurses, and I'll show you the nurse one today and that's what's in our um, online help. So while the terminology uses domains and dimensions at this time, it has a bigger scope beyond t-tests and t-pests. You can have multiple frameworks in Strive and these are tied to goals as well as the evaluation process and the PD courses and workshop. What's great about this is with the growth model, it allows appraisers to track individual user and employee growth across multiple dimensions and um, be able to aggregate that data at the end of the year when you're doing a summative. So that's why frameworks are so important. Um, after you set up your frameworks, I'm gonna show you a little bit of this and then um, Ed's gonna show you some of this where you're gonna tie the framework subcomponents currently dimensions to those courses and workshops and what's nice in workshop is that you can tie a framework from different appraisal types to um, 
a certain course. So if you have a course that would apply to librarians and teachers, even though you may have two different frameworks, that's great. One course can be tied to multiple frameworks. Um, contrary to that, in appraised management for your um, evaluation documents, um, Ed's going to show you that you know, with different frameworks, you're going to tie those appraisal types to the frameworks for tracking purposes, and then evalu doc evaluation documents can be tied to these different framework subcomponents or dimensions. Um, and he's going to talk to you about that in a little bit. So this is what we're getting ready to cover, and I want to show you that. I don't think I have another. Yep. Okay. I want to make sure I didn't have another slide. So that was a glimpse <laughs> at how we're going to wrap up today. I'm going to jump into our online help and show you that there is a new article about Strive frameworks. And this is accessible to you after today's webinar. And you will see a visual here where the framework, framework for professional standards will reach all of these areas, the professional goals, evaluation document questions, as well as professional development courses. And a key thing to note is you must be an appraisal administrator and have that role in Strive in order to create frameworks. If you have that role in appraise, you can already do it. And um, just make sure you have that a role, role showing up for yourself in Strive. This online help has screenshots and will take you through the process of creating a framework and um, you can access that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my demo site and show you how to set up a framework and I'm logging in as an, um, an admin. And um, this can be done in Appraise or in Strive. And as an administrator logs in, I'm gonna go to my appraisal settings and I'm going to go to uh, frameworks. Now, just a note, if you go to general options from last year, we created frameworks for you for TTAS and TPAS. And there was a button you could click to pull those frameworks over into um, your appraise side and then those translated over into Strive. So if you hadn't pushed that button yet and it's still live under general options, you can click that button to pull those frameworks over. Um, if you're creating new frameworks, just click click on or modifying the T-Test, t, -test, t -test frameworks we built for you, click on the frameworks and you will see the two that we created for you with your domains and your dimensions. And you see T-Test also with um, your, standard. thank you, standard and your indicator. And if you notice here, I'm just going to point this out. When I, I see an indicator, this is the dimension, quote unquote, um, it says, as indicator 1A. And personally, I would want to give some text to um, kind of add additional details to what indicator 1A is. This is going to help your workshop creators when they are tagging these indicators to a course in workshop, aka, you know, and Stripe. So um, if it says um, state and district curricula and that's the focus of indicator 1A, you may want want to add some of that text to the name and that'll help your course creators when they're tagging. I did create a new framework and to do a new framework you just go down to the lower quadrant of your screen click new framework and you can give it a name so I'm just going to name this new um, framework. The description is totally optional and it will not show up to end users so that's just for back-end management. And then you will go through this framework, making sure that you highlight anytime you add a new domain or a new component that is um, what we're calling domain at this time. So this would be uh, a new domain, and this may be um, domain one, and give it a name. Let's say it's um, professional. Uh, professionalism. Okay. And click save. Now, keeping this short and sweet and to the point is critical and key here because this is what's going to show up when you're tagging goals, courses, and um, 
questions in an evaluation document. Now, you want to make sure that you are highlighting this domain before clicking on new dimension. And then in this dimension, you want to be short and sweet and to the point, you know, same thing, actually you're tagging with dimensions. So I'm going to say this is D1. Um, um, shows proper or you know protocol i'm just making it up right now once again description is optional and does not appear and i'm going to click save and you're going to do this step by step until you have your entire framework populated you can copy and paste from a text document from a pdf from a website we do recommend if you're copying and pasting from a website it is always a good idea to paste into a text document so it strips out any back end um, coding and if I want to add another dimension, I need to click on the domain first before new dimension will show up for me to add a new dimension. And I go through this entire process, making sure that I click save at the end of each edition. Now I'm going to go up here and show you, here's an example of Texas librarians. And I've copied and pasted in, here's the name of my framework, here are the standards that I'm using. And I've taken this text, which is a goal, which is pretty lengthy, and I have shortened it and made it more succinct before clicking the save button. After I have added each standard, I come back and add the principles, doing the same thing, summarizing, keeping it short and simple. This is going to help everybody who goes through and starts tagging their goals, their courses, and their specific questions in their evaluation documents. Um, I did mention nurse standards, and these I've pulled from the uh, a national website. So if you want to give appropriate credit, it would be a good idea in the description to do that. Basically, I've done everything that you need to do to set up a framework. Um, it should be pretty self-explanatory. You can refer back to these online help documents. Now I'm going to show you how you can tag a course to a dimension or a subcomponent and then toss to Ed so he can show okay. you how you can tag um, to specific questions. Okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Ed. Catherine. Can I just say one thing while you still have yeah. it on the screen? Um, yeah. Right now, going in and managing these frameworks in terms of preparing for the school year, the most important thing is to make sure that you have those category domain type things set up and those dimensions, which we're, we're calling them dimensions, but those professional standards set up. Those are the two most important components of the framework at this time. We do have plans that uh, in, kind of in design phase right now for expanding the functionality of frameworks because these professional standards for reporting purposes, for the idea of principals and district level admins being able to go in and kind of figure things out, how are people doing when it comes to this professional standard versus that one, these are these are very extensible into something that's, that's um, uh, almost like an aware for professional uh, development and professional learning. So we have plans for these. Um, so uh, as you uh, as you set these up, like Catherine pointed out, specifying some details besides 1.1, specify like she has standards and alignment there for TTS. Uh, that that's part of that import. Making sure you have some extra details there is extremely valuable, like Catherine pointed out, because of the reporting potential that uh, these are going to get you. So uh, I just wanted to get uh, kind of reemphasize that point. She's showing you how the TPES, we do not have the extra definitions there. And that's going to, you're going to see in a little bit when Catherine shows you that and um, the course management, how that shows up a little bit funny. So, um, okay. okay, Catherine, go ahead. Thanks, Ed. Okay, so I'm going to change applications because to apply these and assign them to a workshop course, I'm going to need to go into workshop. So I just went back to my main applications page. I'm going to go to a specific course. And um, here's an example of a research course that research could apply to a classroom teacher as well as to a librarian or media specialist. And you see up here, CPR could apply to all first responders, whether they're classroom, campus-based, or district-based. So you may have multiple frameworks that will apply to one course. All I do is I go into the Setup tab when I'm in a um, when I go into a specific course and select it, then I go to course dimensions and you will see that the more specific you are when you're setting up your framework, the easier it's going to be for your course creators to tag those courses. This is currently how all the frameworks are showing up. 
it's a bit difficult to, to navigate. This is going to get better, but just wanted you to see what it's look like in current, looking like currently. And I just happen to know that these are my T-test standards up here at the top. And then here are my indicators. Notice where I added monitoring. This is why it's important um, to be specific when you're labeling those dimensions. And I know that these are tied to T-PES. And then down here, I see some principles. These are coming from the librarian standards. So I can check multiple frameworks that would apply, um, multiple dimensions from frameworks that would apply to multiple uh, Prezi types. And this is going to be very important when you're running reports and you're seeing data and you're looking at it at the end of the year and you want to see have teachers and, and other employees met their goals, reached their goals, grown based on these dimensions. So that's how you're gonna tag a course. You select the course, go to set up course dimensions and you choose from the dimension box, which ones apply. Now, Ed, um, I'm gonna go back to you and we're gonna talk about- Can you leave that screen up for just a yes, second? no problem. Um, Catherine mentioned that this is what it looks like right now. Um, we actually had a meeting with a developer who's working on making this look prettier for you guys. So sometime in the next maybe week or two, you're going to get an update for this. And basically, instead of all of the dimensions being just lumped in together in this kind of small box, the box will be bigger and they're going to have they're going to be more of a tree where t tests all of them will be under something that says t tests and t pests and librarian and nurse whatever your frameworks are will actually be like little headings that you can collapse and expand or maybe just have them all there but you can see them that they're actually grouped that's just going to help you organize it a little better the other component of this is that we were very deliberate on making sure that these can be tagged even after the course has been completed. So somebody can get credit for the course, sign up for it, get credit for it, but maybe nobody had time to go in and tag the standards yet. And then what can happen is when you do have time to go in and tag the standards, this course will now show that not only do they have credit for the course, but they have credit for a course with the following dimensions checked. Okay, so that way there's the rush for getting these done, especially if you have a large course catalog that you're offering at the beginning of the school year, that could be kind of daunting. And so we wanted to make sure that you had time to do that even after the fact. And, and one thing, thank you Ed, for saying that. I, I do want to point out, you can go back and you can tag a course that has already been completed. You can still go back and tag to dimensions. So after the fact, retroactively, you can tag if you need to. Okay. Cool. You ready to go into um, appraise documents for evaluation? Let's go into appraise documents. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So Catherine's going into appraise because that is still turned on. But remember, appraise <laughs> management can also be done in Strive. And so she's showing you now how Strive is also an access point for appraise management. You have to be able to manage evaluation documents at the district level, the district level right. Um, if you could do it in appraise, then you can do it in Strive because we made sure to transfer that over. Um, she's going to hit the evaluations templates, and then let's just pick one of the templates, whichever one you feel like doing. Um, she's going to an observation, okay, and she picked a t-test one. So the deal here is um, on the main page, you first have to pick the framework that you want this document to attach to. Now you may recall that. Just now, Catherine was showing you that a workshop course that's now in Strive can be tagged to multiple frameworks. It's actually not being tagged to the framework at all. It's being tagged to the individual standards within multiple frameworks. And that's because just like Catherine said, something like CPR would be for any first responder, whether it be the assistant principal, the coach, the, the math teacher, whoever, okay, the librarian. But for an observation template, a walkthrough template, a summative template, a reflection document, this is going to be attached to an appraisee type, which means that we're talking about a single framework. OK, so the first step is to actually pick that framework and she's got t-test highlighted. She's going to pick that because this is a t-test specific observation. OK, now you do not have to attach a framework. So like if you have a um, an evaluation document for maybe your paraprofessional staff and maybe you don't have a framework for your paraprofessionals, although you can. You don't have to pick a framework for them. You can just make it blank and it will operate exactly like it did before. It will be missing some of the reporting that can be done at the standard level, but you can still do report 
uh, reporting on the actual form. You can see, you know, how many forms have been completed and all that other kind of stuff. Okay. So back to our t-test sample. Um, we pick t-test, we save it, and then when we go to the edit template tab, we are now able to edit individual items in our template. Let's go to here's a let's uh, a matrix item. That's instructions. Let's uh, can we find an instruction item can be attached to dimensions. Here's a matrix item, okay? And this matrix item has columns and rows. Now the columns are your rubric descriptors. You can't tag the uh, the levels. You can't tag proficient and developing. But if you go to the rows part of a matrix item, every individual row can now be tagged with the appropriate dimension. So this row right here, which is dimension 1.1, is not tagged. You can actually see the descriptor that was written here, but it says dimension colon and it's blank. What Catherine's going to do is she's double clicked on it so that she can open it up and she's going to pick 1.1 in the drop down. Okay. See, I double clicked it so it would appear up here. Single clicking, it just highlights it. So thanks, Ed, for saying double click. Yes, ma'am. And now that she's picked it, she's going to say update row. Okay. So it's very similar to the process for building a template where you have to open up the row. She can add a new row if she wanted to, um, and she could make the new row item, or she can move on to another row in the template form. I'm just going to yes. do this one to um, show it. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it should be the, it should be the same because it's under that same header, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. So you see how she's got dimension 1.1 for the first row and dimension 1.2 for the second row. These rows are, are going to show up in the form like they always did with, uh, could you, um, the preview shows up in another window, doesn't it? Yep, it does. There we go. Can so you, I don't, can you see it? Okay. and we can actually see it looks the exact same like it always did. There's the row uh, with distinguish and accomplish. There's the new item that she just built. And you can not actually see the dimension that was tagged, very similar to an aware test where you tag a standard in the test, but when you print the test out, you can't see the standard. The student doesn't see which standard it is. It's very similar for the form here, but in the background, now these rows, these individual items are tagged to those dimensions, which is going to um, connect to reporting and analytics so that a principal is going to be able to see, okay, down the road, I want to see um, what walkthroughs have been done where 1.1 was observed, okay? Um, so um, we can, it, it's a little bit labor intensive for the first round. You're going to have to go through and you're going to have to find all of your forms and you're going to have to tag them. But uh, you see at the top, in addition to the save button, we've got that uh, the update existing documents button. And um, once you click that, I guess what I'm getting at is uh, if you've started this process now, then you're good because nobody has an existing document. However, if somebody isn't able to get to managing this until maybe the first or second week of September, and maybe somebody's already created some of these forms for a teacher, maybe they've already done a walkthrough or something like that, you click that update existing documents button, and the individual walkthrough form or whatever that's already been created will now be tagged with the dimensions that have been saved. Okay, so just like with the workshop courses now in Strive, the appraised templates that are now in Strive can be tagged to dimensions. And then if the year has already started, you have a button that lets you update the existing instances of this template for individual appraisees. Okay. Hey, could so, I add a caveat here just for a second about the comment box? Yes, please. Because I've had some questions about, um, can you tag a comment box with multiple dimensions? And you notice it's a it, it's a one to one relationship. And a best practice would be that you have a comment box per domain if you're if you're evaluating multiple domains in the same evaluation document, so that you can tag that evidence or those comments to a specific dimension. Yes, and and piggybacking off of that. We have design intentions to fix our form builder because it's a little bit old fashioned right here, right? We have design intentions to fix our form builder to make it so that future form building will be way better. But we needed to make sure that your currently existing appraised forms still worked in Strive. And so we did not touch any of this management except for the addition of dimensions. Moving forward, 
when we do give you guys more form editing options, we're going to actually make these items a lot more um, open for different types of uh, forms. So right now the comment box is, like Catherine said, just one dimension at a time. So you're going to have to use that knowledge to determine how many comment boxes to throw in. You might have to have one for each dimension, like she mentioned. Or uh, somebody's also asked about check boxes, uh, where you can have the item where you can check if applicable. You can actually make every individual checkbox a different dimension. And so if you have a checkbox item for like a walkthrough form or something like that, where the principal then checks everything that they observed, that would then tag that specific dimension in the text box or, or in the checkbox. Are you looking for a checkbox sample? Yes. Well, that's a comment box, but here's an example of type of time of of the observation. The, if you notice, like Catherine just showed you, that there's no dimension available, that's because the template information tab does not yet have a framework. Okay. And I did that on purpose. <laughs> yes, I, I, knew it. I knew it. I wasn't going to point it out. Um, <laughs> so uh, as soon as she tags it and saves it, now you'll notice that she has all of the t-test dimensions available to her. Okay. Uh, so the individual checkbox has one dimension so you can add several check boxes and each one would get a different dimension okay we have some questions in here about this so every row the principals will have to select twice the answer is no the principals not the managers the managers are going to have to go in and do the the uh the tagging but the principals the appraisers who get these documents will not notice the difference these document it, let's say you do not change the document at all you just tag dimensions when the principal creates a new walkthrough or creates a new observation, they won't even notice that these documents have been touched. Okay. Now, um, we have questions about summatives, and that's actually what we're the one of the main purposes of this, besides reporting, is we get the question all the time: what about the principal who starts a summative evaluation and they're evaluating 1.1 and they want to know. What about the information that they tagged the 1.1 for the observation? I want that to auto-populate. Well, we're not gonna give you auto-populate, we're gonna give you something even better. See, the principal who did a 45-minute observation, they might have observed 1.1, and they might have said that the teacher was, let's say, um, let's say they were proficient at 1.1, okay? But the teacher might have also had a goal tagged to 1.1 and done way more than the principal saw in the 45 minute observation. The teacher might have gone to some professional learning courses related to 1.1, okay? Also something that the principal couldn't observe in the 45 minutes. So what we're gonna do in the evaluation process, which this is a mock-up here, if you look to the right, we have actually the domains and dimensions that are attached to this appraisee type. We talked about evaluation process earlier this week in the other webinar. We're going to expose to the evaluation process here and also to the summative document all of the tagged items so now when a principal goes in at the summative time and says how did you do on 1.1 they're going to be able to actually see and we don't have a mock-up for this but they're going to actually be able to see every single 1.1 artifact including the proficient from that observation form and that goal and those professional learning activities and they can then make the decision well you know what the teacher is still proficient or they can actually rate the teacher even higher or lower depending on the extra pieces of evidence that come in teachers will be able to load evidence attached to frameworks principals will be able to load evidence attached to frameworks and through the process and through conversations throughout the year we're going to be collecting artifacts as teams for professional learning versus just compliance, fill this out, let me see what you did, check a box and I'm done, okay? So that's really where we're going here with frameworks and we're super excited about them. And Ed, before we um, wrap up our 30 minutes, there's one other step when you create a framework about um, tying that framework to an appraisy type. So do you mind talking through that while I click for you? Yes, so when you go to an appraisy type, um, the very first box other than the title is selecting a framework. And when you select that framework, that is what exposes the entire set of domains and dimensions for t-test, for example, to that appraisee, okay? So she, Catherine just picked t-test and she's saving it. And every evaluation process, step and task that she adds here from now on, 
she'll be using templates that are t-test templates okay and that's going to add layers of reporting and analytics options to the principals and to the teachers who are under this specific framework and you know that she has t-test teacher and she has another t-test teacher probably because it's a demo site but really a lot of people do have like a t-test teacher waiver year and a t-test teacher um uh, full observation and things like that because they're tied to the same frameworks the reporting will re will give you the option to report these in common so you'll actually be able to say show me all of the information about all of the people on the t-test framework not just this one appraisal type and that is the value of attaching a framework to a specific evaluation process appraisal type and to these forms and courses okay so we want to we, that's it for our time uh, we're at 30 minutes and we want to thank all of y'all for attending we will be doing another one of these next tuesday um, the link for that will be going out soon and will be on our website. We're going to be all about goals on Tuesday. Now, we introduced goals to you guys in appraise a little while back, and we're going to um, have a good, long 30 minute conversation about the future of goals for Strive and the workflow for goals and the uh, professional learning process um, that can come from goal setting in Strive. That's going to be on Tuesday, July 25th from 10 to 10 30. And thank you for joining us. Thank y'all. Have a good day.